by Mike. That the um, did you get that one? So, but can I can I just leave this? Come back to adjourn this item and come back to it in a um, in a short while. All right, thank you. So um, I'll move on to the draft submission on Section 76 Brougham Street upgrade, um, and I will look to um, Mike to move that motion. Do I have a seconder for it? Uh, Celeste, um, has anyone got any questions or comments for staff? Tim, I think you had an issue that you wanted to raise. Yeah. Um I've raised them before, so they, they won't be a surprise. I guess just a couple of things is, um, <clears throat> and how do we we cope with regards to the? It seems that through the the our relationship with Waka Katahi, they have come to our community board a lot with regards to what they're doing on Brougham Street. They've done the uh, combined with us the um, study with between Brougham and Morehouse. There's nothing done really on the south side of Brougham Street, which was a, obviously a concern for us as our community board does both sides of Brougham Street. But how do we go forward with regards, what's the process of the concerns we have that the effects will be on the community? Because one of the things that was never discussed with us was the no right turn onto Selwyn Street and it was a safety issue. The safety issue there with the community is getting across Brougham Street, not so much the Selwyn Street shops, which we're dealing with in a number of other ways with the cell as an organisation. So I guess the detail of all those intersections was kind of left out. And, and It wasn't my, as clear as it could have been, yeah. And my final kind of concern is with, and especially with one of our ex-staff members, senior staff members being involved in it, going out for consultation over Christmas over such an important thing. Yep. Yep. Because we're all on board with regards to the safety issues on Brougham Street. There's no question about that, yep. but it's issues onto and into the community. So I guess, sorry for it to rattle along, but they are really, they've been kind of there for a long time. So um, through the chair, I'd suggest we... Uh, Beef up point number four, instead of saying we are concerned, we say we're very concerned about the fact that it went out over Christmas and we actually put it right up front, page one, say it isn't an ideal time. You don't get the best response and the community feels a bit disengaged Absolutely. and that's effectively what we're saying there, but we say it a bit stronger. Thank you. Um, I also think in that sort of background we um, put an additional... We've got it through the document, but we put an additional paragraph in there saying... Um, talking about the work that needs to be done on the surrounding streets, the tie-in to the, to the fact that the NPS has come out now, mm. it is going to have an effect on the development in the area, all the land use. It's in there, but we lift it up and yep. we bring it forward in the document. We also close the document with a bit more of a summary around those key points. I think a couple of other points you've, you um, raised with us as council over the last few days has been um, our climate change goals... The big one is the impact on surrounding up, the, the impact that it has on the local road network. We can pull forward the safety concerns around mm. not allowing people to turn right down Selwyn Street is probably is a big one in that link with the, yeah. um, the the cycleways on the other streets. Um, and our request to have NZ, have Waka Kotahi, um actually prioritise them as, as a program of works. Yeah. We'll do that. Um, so we'll, we'll bring it forward in, in those two, two positions right at the start and then close with it right at the end as well because I think it's important that Waka Kotahi help yeah. us um, work with with right. the community yeah. to get the best outcomes. Thank you, because I, I know that the, that the climate issues are huge, yeah. but at the forefront of the people in the community, and we've been dealing with it with you guys, and it's been really good on Selwyn Street, etc., but the, the forefront of all the concern the, is the number one thing is the, the community is safety. Yes. And so, you know, yep. and I think yep. we, 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 we don't want to be suddenly holding all the responsibility yep. of those side roads because I think our community needs to be engaged with Waka Katahi because they, they, they kind of leave communities out. I don't care what people say, they do. We're the experts in it. We know them. We live with them. What Waka Katahi seems just to put roads, the big roads through and leave it to others. So I think we can't do that here. Yep. 
Thank you. Thanks. I've um, got, um, uh, sorry, Melanie and then Anne. <laughs> Um, just a quick question, and you might not be able to answer it because they're not really the right people to be asking as Waka Kaitahi, but um, for those T2 lanes, are they actually envisaging trucks will be there and, or not? No. No, okay, good. Yeah. Anne? Yeah. Kia ora, just, um, are we giving a strong enough message through the submission to Waka Kaitahi about the need to look at the wider issue of, of the traffic coming from Rolleston, Lincoln, Prebleton, and the congestion that it's causing on Brougham Street? For example, are they considering putting land aside for park and ride? And can we strengthen that message? Yes. Yeah, I think we do strengthen that message. It is in there around um, them uh, having some projects on to look at the, the, the length of the corolla, or basically from Rolleston to the port in the future, and how they manage, um, they either use managed lanes, they look at safety, um, especially out towards, in the, in the already established areas. Um, but again, I think we could beef that up in that last summary section, re-summarise the key points and what we do in the, in the submission, which will help them as well in the long run. Thank you. That's great. Um, I've got Yanni. Just um, the, um, I'm just wondering if we've got any evidence, like, because we did a lot of work initially um, around the investment case around supporting the, pedest the signalised pedestrian crossing for Wilson's Road across Brougham Street because it's really close to that Apawa Road, Brougham Street intersection and it just seems to me really um, quite, quite weird just to add a pedestrian crossing unless we've got good evidence of people crossing at that point. Wanting to cross at that point, I agree. What we have highlighted in the submission is... Um, and we could maybe lift it a little bit, is the necessity for them to really look at where the, where the pedestrian desire lines are rather than where it's easy to put um, crossing yeah. points. Yeah, yeah. Making so the, I think yeah. maybe we lift that up a little bit. And making, certainly support making that Opala Road, Brougham Street intersection safer for, for everyone would be really, it really important. Scope, isn't it? That's um, right on the edge, so okay. we, yeah. can we, that. we can double check that and make sure we just highlight that. Um, I do want to raise the point, it probably goes back to what Councillor Scandrit said as well, is Wakakutahi have been focused on trying to get that cross movement improved um, as well, so if we can help them achieve that, then we should. So if Wilson's is not a known desire line, then we probably should raise it. I just don't know who would have that information, like... Like no, we are, what's informing some of the just the projects that they've put forward? Look, it's unlikely that we have the information because it's their project and their road, so they've done it. But I can't I can't answer it. For, right. And just to be clear, we, we've also made reference to the Garlands Road section, even though it's out of scope, to say that we are concerned about the impact. We'll talk about the wider corridor from the port to Rolleston, and we will we will use that as an example. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Pauline. Thank you. Look, I'm, I'm pleased to see number 21 that you've strengthened that about the um, possibility that we may have to bring forward some safety improvements from our own programme. Would we be wanting to put a quantum in there, a figure in there, or a range? No, I, I, I think we'd be um, remiss if we did that at this stage. Okay. If we've learned anything from CNC, it's usually more than we expected. <laughs> we'll think of a figure and then triple it. Um, and the other Probably thing is, just, just a question about the overhead um, pedestrian cycle bridge. I don't know what number it is. It's down further. Um, it's Simeon and Collins, I think, isn't it? Mm -hmm. No. It's, where does it go? Yeah, yep, that is right. Um, so how, does that, how can you make that um, accessible? Are you thinking mobility scooters and things? How, how would you do that? An overbridge. It needs to have ramps rather than steps. So they'd have to be incredibly long so they're not too steep, because this would be a very oh, high there's bridge. A, there's, there's design standards that need to be met, and they all take into account accessibility requirements. Okay, and so, so I think we need to make that really strong, a clear point that, that that's really important, that it is accessible to everybody then, because it will cost more. It, it, absolutely. Yeah. Look, that's business as usual for NZTA. Yeah. They, 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 they wouldn't be building up steps, it's not... They're the same as us yeah, okay. in, that, in that they work to the same set of standards. Yeah, yeah. thanks. Right.
um, that's everyone. So it's been moved by oh. Mike. Oh, sorry, Aaron. My apologies. That's all right. Um, so, uh, Lynette, from our first presentation we had around this through to now. Oh, sorry. My first question is: What's the total cost of the project? I think they've allocated ninety million. It was something in the order of ninety million. That's, yeah, that's what I thought. So. What's the intention that Waka Kotahi are trying to achieve here? What's the intention of the $90 million spent is to... As to... Um, this, is a no, this is a known congestion corridor through the city. Yes. Yeah. Um, it is about um, working to address... Uh, to start addressing some of their climate change goals. Um, and also to improve safety and accessibility along the corridor. So One of the other goals is also to um, improve movements for freight. Yes. So it is a corridor between inland port and the port. And our own one says that this doesn't improve the freight flow. At, at this all. stage it doesn't, but it does a lot of other things around trying to improve congestion and safety. And it's, it is that um, there, there's a section of Brougham Street for you probably know what it is, but I, I don't know the exact streets. But is that our most congested road in the city? Oh, I don't know off the top of my head, I'm sorry. It'd be close but to it, wouldn't it? So it? It is very congested and it's yeah. very busy. No, it's, it's not like our Brentford. road. <laughs> the, um, it's not our road, it's their road. Yeah, yeah, but of the roads that go through our city, that's the most One congested. Most. One of so most. I didn't see anything in here. That would that shows that that congestion will be relieved. What can you highlight? There is, is? It isn't in this. This is a submission on the proposal that they've put forward. Yeah. That information will be in their proposal. Um, they are looking to improve safety, improve. Um, one of the issues with Brougham Street is the is is the barrier it creates to north south movements. So a lot of the issue with Brougham Street is actually getting across Brougham Street, not getting along it. Oh, no, not a few. Yes, it is about north-south movement. So they're working on that as well. But So there is there are there are things that they've achieved through this and, and improving the north-south movements versus the, you know, versus the east-west. So maintaining your east-west movements along the corridor while improving what's going across. So there are improvements at the intersections to achieve that. There's safety so, improvements. Um, a lot of it is tied up in the intersection improvements. Right. So that's my understanding. But it is this is what we call Tahi's project. We are trying to put a submission into it. Yeah. The detail of it, you have discussed it previously with Waka Kotahi. Yeah, because if it's so to I'm not, if I it's can't. to increase that flow and uh, both ways, there there, uh, there was an old program of doing four major flyovers. Where's that at? Is that in the So Long the grade, or... grade separation has been discounted as part of the business case, and we have discussed this with At you the before. Moment. It has been discounted as part of the business case because it is very intrusive and extremely expensive, and it's and it's very uh, disruptive to communities. So it will sever communities entirely. But that and it's exceptionally it's debatable. Expensive. I got them through my ward, so and it's fine, but. It, we're, so, we're not going to include in our submission to Waka Kotahi that they revisit that decision. No. Yeah. Right. We, well, agreed, we agreed with them on we that don't decision. Have advice. Okay, um, and with it, because there's a lot of reference to the T2, yep. have we seen any evidence that T2 will help reduce carbon emissions? Or it has worked to do that? The point of T2s is to reduce the number of um, single occupancy trips that people use in their cars. So you, you get yeah. more benefit if you've got more than one person in a car and you're not sitting in it, your car on your own. And that, that is, there's, there's heaps, of, heaps of evidence, but I don't have it with me today. Yeah, it would be good to see that at some point and see where in New Zealand and where overseas that has worked. Because I've been to plenty of places where the only lane that flows is the T2 lane and all the others are full. Yep. And the T2 one's empty, so yep. it's clearly not working. Because people, someone who works, lives in Rolleston that starts working town at eight doesn't try and find someone in their neighbourhood that might leave at the same time. Their own wife might work somewhere else. Because Christchurch is very spread. We don't have a centre city that's working. So 
yeah, th- hence, these are all the we, issues that we're addressing. Yeah, and um, hence we've in asked in this. Yeah. Case. We've asked in this for them to have an ongoing project to look at how it gets all the way from Rolleston and how they manage that and, and actually reduce the number of cars that need to make trips. Make it possible for people to not take a single occupancy trip to get into town. But that's what we've got to work on, and that's the and that's proposal. the mass rapid but transit business case as well. Yes, it but is. those people already had that option. That is the mass rapid transit business case as well. This is option. focusing on the Brougham Street submission. So I, I, I understand what you're making the point about, but it's not the issue for this submission. No, well, it's not. The, the, what I'm trying to get to the nub of the questions is it's $90 million that doesn't meet any goals. We don't goals. make the decision about money's, Waka Kotahi's project. Money. Yeah, the money's going to be spent and the money's been committed by the Crown for this project. We need to comment on this project. But if we think it's not going to achieve any of the goals, then we should speak up and say... This we won't have, get freight to the port. There is a here. detailed submission that's attached about our concerns about elements of the approach, but we do have an underlying concern about a number of the um, congestion and the crossing issues. And you've heard that from the councillors, the ward councillors, about the challenges that they have. So, I mean, if, I'd, I'd much rather that we have the debate about it. Oh, yeah. Cool, thank you. All right, so it's been moved by Mike and seconded by uh, Celeste. That's right. So I'll um, open it up for debate. Tim. Yeah, first of all, I just want to thank our staff for working on They've been working on this for a very long time, and I really appreciate it. It's your frustrations much of the time as well. Um, yeah, the comment with regards to what is the issue with Brougham Street, it is the south-north crossings. Because if you can picture a, a red light, three vehicles pull up, a, a B train, a private car and a bus, there is physically no way they can part, take off at the same time and stay together till the next set of lights. And I should also mention, I think there's 16 sets of lights on this stretch of road. So I don't think there'd be a, a, a freight transport corridor meant to have ease of um, transport of freight from inland uh, port to a port that would have that disruption. So that's just a fact of life. And so I really appreciate you trying to, to look after the communities on either side. Um, I don't think Wakatahi has done the same. I think they look at the, the south-north uh, transit as a problem, which it is, but they don't deal with the communities. And I was really disappointed that they decided to do, as we know, the consultation over the Christmas period, which I personally think is pretty insulting as the way we go forward. Um, I have a lot of concerns for our communities, and my main concern is the safety, and I really appreciate Wakatahi and our own staff on this. However, I don't want us and the ratepayers of Christchurch lumbered with trying to fix problems that are created by traffic and communities mm. that are now being pushed on with regards to intensification, and it's our ratepayers that will spend the next decade trying to fix it and cope with the safety issues. Thank you. Thank you, Melanie. Um, thanks. Look, I'm completely um, in support of, of the intent of this um, council submission, and I hope um, that Waka Kotahi NZTA take it seriously and actually think about putting the physical works on hold until further work's been done in collaboration with council um, in response to our submission points. I think um, yeah, councillors, the community board, and a lot of the communities, especially in Addington, um, were pre-consulted with Waka Kaitahi, and I appreciated this a lot. But a lot of the detail, especially around the intersection changes, was either glossed over or missed completely during that process. And I find that extremely disappointing, especially when one of these was the right-hand turn into Selwyn Street. Now, you may remember that residents and the local MP fought for several years um, to get that put in, and to remove this is actually a slap in the face to the community. I'm aware um, Council and Waka Kotahi staff collaborate on studies and issues, one of these being the Morehouse Brom investment case that's mentioned. And it seems, again, disappointing Council staff have not had the opportunity or assistance from um, Waka Kotahi to model and understand the effects of the proposed changes on Council's surrounding streets. Therefore, on the submission, um, we requested additional funding from Waka Kotahi, and I think that's really, really necessary. Um, and that includes um, 
proposals at Waka Kotahi's put in when they've discussed with us, things such as bus lanes on Selwyn Street um, to connect the south up to the city and also that cycle lane on Gasson Street they've talked to us about. So when this project starts as well, um, I do request Waka Kotahi um, work with council um, and include elected members um, alongside the community of Addington when they do the design of the pedestrian overbridge that they've um, agreed to do together, that'll join the two sides of Addington together. The effects on surrounding communities are key in this project and I do feel like they've been overlooked for too long. Uh, Sarah? Kia ora. Um, thanks so much and thanks for all your work on this. Um, there are some really good things about this proposal. A lot of the safety improvements I think are really good, but the, the submission outlines some concerns we've got on those as well. Um, shared paths aren't ideal, especially when they're really narrow, all of those kind of things. Um, but for me, the, the climate impact's a really big one, and the, um, the, doc, the climate assessment impact for this particular um, NZ Upgrade project makes it really clear, um, if you read it, um, that the only way that there will be a decrease in carbon emissions through this project, which is what they're saying it'll have, is by the switch from single occupancy to T2. And there is nothing currently in their plan which actually encourages um, people to switch to T2 um, and makes it a really attractive option for people. If people don't switch to T2, the lane is unused and carbon emissions go up and people are stuck in traffic even longer. And so I think that the, the strengthening of the submission to make sure that um, they look at extending the T2 lane to Rolleston and have enforcement in place, I think is really key. Um, I'm really concerned that just adding a, an extra lane is gonna um, attract more traffic like it has um, in, in, in many overseas countries and actually won't achieve their goals. So I think that really needs to be looked at, thanks. All right, so we'll um, put that motion. Oh, oh sorry. Aaron and then Phil. Yeah, um, I from the start of this project and what Waka Kotahi come to show us, uh, on behalf of a lot of ratepayers in the city and taxpayers, I'm incredibly disappointed. Ninety odd million dollars to not uh, increase the traffic flow for people and for freight on a main traffic route, probably the main traffic route in Christchurch, is appalling and is a slap in the face. Um, for anyone who thinks that our population is going to get smaller, dreaming, uh, Christchurch will head at some point towards half a million uh, people uh, living in Christchurch itself and the greater area. Uh, you know, Canterbury is already uh, heading for 600,000 and Canterbury will eventually be a million people. Uh, this is the main freight route to the port. This is a main route through the city. Uh, it needs to flow and whatever it takes to do that should be done. When it comes to things like safety, when a main road doesn't flow, other vehicles will rat run. And rat running is dangerous. And that's putting trucks in other vehicles trying to get somewhere because this is natural human behaviour. People work, people have goods to deliver, people have something to do. We can think and dream all we want that we can change their behaviours, but there is natural human behaviour based on thousands of years of evolution. We went from the horse to the vehicle, the vehicle will change, the fuel will get cleaner, but people will still be moving themselves and goods around cities forever until humans are gone. So uh, to think otherwise is just not true. So it is our role to facilitate the way that a city wants to move, not try to dictate to them the way we want them to move. And that will reduce carbon and save, help save the planet. Phil. Yeah, what he said. Um, the the only thing I the, one of the things is it's as Lynette said it, it's um, Wakatahi's road. They have done a lot of work on it. I think they should be left to do their own thing. One one of the things that really worries me is item twenty seven where we are like insurance that there'll be on road cycle lanes for the um, commuter cyclists. That this road has not got enough room in it now. Even if they put it out to the six lanes, there's still not going to be enough room. Commuter cyclists should be the ones that are, should be encouraged to go and rat run somewhere else on another road, and we keep them off there. Keep keep them, put them, let them go on the um, shared pathway, which is cool. And I understand they 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 go fast, and we've got to be careful. They should they should be the ones to be encouraged to go somewhere else, because as Aaron said, this is the main drag for the port and a lot of other things. So 
I don't agree with item 27 particularly for one, and I think um, that transit should be just allowed to do what, do what they want to do, and hopefully they'll listen to some of the things we talk about, but I don't agree with all of the submission. Thank you. I just think that um, I just would like to contribute to the debate. Oh, well, I'll wait till after Yanni. Yanni? Sorry. Um, like we, the, the frustration is that after the earthquake, we had a freight action plan, Greater Christchurch freight action plan that was developed. Brougham Street was identified as being the critical freight corridor. And I just want to echo the concerns that are being raised around um, if you don't improve the access for freight, the freight goes through the side streets. So a number of people I've got in like Bromley and in Wolfston, one of the biggest complaints is the heavy vehicles going through residential neighbourhoods where there's children going to school, um, where there's local kids playing, and the speed of the heavy vehicles and the impact on shaking the houses because of the inefficient um, state highway network that goes through the area. I mean, for example, the fact that um, we allowed a, a plan change in Kenaway for a huge industrial area, 10,000 extra traffic movements, many of them heavy, and then this, there's no direct access to the state highway where they all have to go through in these big sort of loops around. It's just insane. So, you know, I, I do have a lot of sympathy for the fact that we should be trying to improve Brougham Street for freight because the impact that we have on other parts of our network by not having efficient freight movement is really undesirable. And there's a lot of complaints that I've had in my area from people around the impact of that. I also think it's it's kind of um, uh, concerning, although we've, we've raised the issue around the minimum width of a cycle lane, that the problem is that like, if you go to Gasson Street at the moment, it's the, it's the vehicle lane that's too narrow for the size of vehicles that are using that space. So if they just use the existing road corridor and try to cram more stuff in, and, and we try and put uh, a, a wide range of different activities in the same road and corridor as a city and as a, as a country, it just it creates a lot of danger and a lot of conflict. And I think that's the fundamental problem here, whereas Brougham Street, we're trying to do too many things with the road that creates a less satisfactory outcome for everyone involved. Um, and, and I just think we need to, as a city, really think about the purpose of these roads and how they can be more efficient. So I'm really concerned at a number of things in this um, program where it just seems to um, counter, counteract um, the, the... So we put safety improvements in, but then we delay the freight movement, and then we just encourage rat running through local areas. And with Google Maps, I think what people also need to understand is with technology, people actually get told to go rat running when there's delays. So... You know, it's very hard to um, address, but I, I am really concerned about this project and the, the impact that it will have for a number of reasons. So just the comment I wanted to make was that the um, council has been asked to make a, a submission on the Waka Katahi project, and what the very strong message that we are sending back is that the total cost of the project must include the downstream effects. If we've learned nothing from what happened with the Northern Corridor, it is that. There is no reason why the people of Christchurch, the hard-working, um, rate-paying um, residents of Christchurch, should meet the costs of these w wider impositions on the central city. Now, we expect that our central city um, has to be because you have to go through the city to get to the port um, from the south and uh, and also from the north. So we, we understand that. But there are downstream effects and they should be included in the total cost of the project. Um, and that's very strongly made in the submission. So I'm very appreciative of staff for the hard work that they've put into making a good submission. Thank you. Um, just really wanting to reinforce that message as well, that this is an opportunity for Waka Kotahi to actually take a much wider look at the whole um, network that feeds into Brougham Street. And we have to start addressing the amount of traffic that's coming through from Rolleston, Templeton, Prebleton, Lincoln, and dealing with that. So this is a very specific part of, of, a, of a network, but we have to keep encouraging Waka Kotahi to look at the wider issues and to work with them to solve those. So, thank you. Mike, do you want to wrap up the debate? Yeah, thank, thank you. Um, 
Look, like you've said, um, Mayor, this this is not our project. This is Waka Katahi's project. Um, but obviously, we're um, a key stakeholder, and it does affect our wider network and many communities that this corridor goes goes through. And yes, it is an important link to to the port, the seaport, um, especially with the, um, the inland ports. Um, and so, moving freight through there efficiently is is important, but we can't forget that actually what is really important for us is, is our communities and the safety of our our communities. Um, and, and I think some of the um, aspects of, of this design does address some of those safety concerns. Um, you know, I've had a couple of um, meetings with individuals in the Addington community, um, and you know that they're, they're quite grateful that the um, at-grade crossing has been removed. Now we know a, a person on a bike um, what was killed at that that crossing, so it's actually very very good in their place. But yeah, they are very concerned with other aspects of this um, design and how it will sever their their community that's already quite fragile. Um, and I, I think we can't lose track of that. That while, while this is a row for for cars, it is impacting communities and the communities around it. And we need to be very aware of that. Safety is important. Uh, we need to get that right, but we can't sever a community even, even more than what has been severed. Um, it's a little bit disappointing that I'm hearing councillors encouraging people to drive more to de decrease carbon. I'm not too sure where that information is is coming from. Um, look, and, and I get the concerns of, of Yanni. There are wider impacts, um, so it's really important that um, we, we look and hopefully get Wakatahi to actually come on board if, if they're trying to put this program through, which they see will only really work if we do certain projects, that actually they fund us appropriately to be able to do them sooner and rather later so it actually lines up. I, I share Tim's, Melanie's concerns about the impacts that some of these turn-in restrictions will have, and I, and I notice there's also a um, turn-in restriction that the um, central... Um, Limwood Heathcote Community Board added in, which was quite quite surprising. Uh, I think one of the things that has has disappointed me um, with this is is really the, not only the timing of this um, consultation over the school holiday period, when such an important community, you know, um, the Addington School community, has has just really, you know, they're trying to go through. It's been a hard year, and now they have a break and they have to do this consultation. Um, it is also the um, just the major impact it's having on on everyone's on everyone's lives out out there. Um, there is major concern with what this will will do to them. So, look, I, I support our submission. I think it's a strong submission. It's outlining our concerns, our our, our desire for Wakatahi to actually do this this better, to actually ensure that their their um, information they supply is a little bit more realistic. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I think. That's, I get five minutes because I was the mover. No. Uh, I, I think that was one of the biggest concerns I had. When you look at the information they supply, the front page on their website shows this beautiful tree-lined, four-lane street with absolutely no cars. It's misleading. Their information they have been given to the communities has been misleading. I think that's one of the most disappointing aspects of this project. Thank you. Thanks very much. I'll um, put the motion. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. Aye. So um, Sam McDonald, um, James Goff, Catherine Chu, Phil Major, and Aaron Kewan. Just the anti-community council. Thank you. Right, uh, that's carried.